Oh boy, I got some special stuff coming on today, and you're not going to miss hearing. From one of the biggest surprises of the 2019 undrafted class, and Devontae Kaycock. He's going to come on to discuss his college career, the pre-draft process, playing the NBA Summer League, and of course, the preseason now with the LA Lakers and the China trip that has now become very famous. But I'm your host, Zach Shoe Shoemaker, and you're not going to miss upcoming episodes and series that are going to be on my podcast, so make sure to stay in touch and to stay up to date by following me at Zach Shoemaker on both Instagram and Twitter. But with that being said, I think we got to hop right in. I couldn't be more excited than to welcome on the former UNC Wilmington star, the all-time single-season field goal percentage leader, one of the stars of the 2019 NBA Summer League, where he starred on the LA Lakers, and now he's a member of the LA Lakers, and Devontae Kaycock. What's going on today, my guy? How you doing? Doing good. Pretty good. Let's just jump right in. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, obviously, the Lakers and the Nets in preseason, but let's head back and just talk a little about your college career and Tell us some of the stuff that really struck you and some of the accolades that you always remember. Oh, uh, well, going back to college, it was a great experience for me. My freshman, sophomore year, going to the NCAA tournament two years back-to-back and uh, being able to work with another coach from Carolina and just being a part of that Carolina family. It was uh, just a great experience. I learned both sides from winning championships to losing as well. And um, some people don't always – just get one side or the other, but I got a good blend of it, and both of them taught me a lot of lessons from how to face adversity to coming together to what it takes to win, and the great feeling of winning championships, basically, and playing against good teams. And I learned so much, and I bring all of that with me from high school and college to professional now, and it's um, it all just helps me in being just who I am today. No doubt. I mean, obviously, you had tons of accolades, obviously being on, like, the first team, having the all-time late season, field goal percentage. But I think one thing that really stood out, stood out is obviously in the beginning, as more towards the beginning of your career when you were able to break the record for field goal percentage. And then you also kind of altered your game and added more mid-range and outside shots. And so talk about that and what it was developing the other parts of your game. Uh, well, that's um, me basically now trying to continue to develop my game and uh, definitely show that junior senior in college and it's just a grind even as well now basically starting at the bottom again i got to go back to getting to um being a known player in this league and around the world and uh, that's something that I'm, I'm just continuing to work on i gotta continue to work on my game continue to work on what i've been doing plus working on elevating my game to make me even a better player as well and add even more value to myself and for other teams and uh, it's just a process of taking it slow, and the progress is showing on offense, defense, and everything I put the work in towards. Absolutely. And I think also that's something that you're able to do where you're able to get the opportunity to play in the NBA, which is huge. And But talk about the draft process, obviously preparing, and talk about what it was like getting doing workouts and kind of getting familiar and trying to get your way into the league. It was very different for me. Um, so I wasn't getting workouts for a while. Um, the whole beginning when pre-draft workouts started, I think it was like a solid two months, didn't have any workouts. And then towards the end, like the last two weeks uh, before the draft, my uh, workouts started picking up. I think I had six or seven within those two weeks. And the last one actually happened to be the Lakers the day before the draft. And um, I had a great workout there. Um, I impressed the coaches, impressed a lot of people there. And I just gave them all. And it was just a process. I knew I just had to stay um, stay in what was going on at the time, not letting things around me think make me think otherwise or people make me think otherwise and just trusting the process. And I just knew as long as I continue to work and I know what I'm doing and I give it everything I got, something's going to work out, which obviously at this point, everything has. Um, Lakers gave me opportunity the night of the draft and they didn't waste any time. And um, I feel like obviously the Lakers is just one of the best teams in the world. So um, for them to have interest in me, it was a blessing. And I took that and just continued to pride on it. And actually that day I went to the, um, to the gym that night uh, with one of my trainers. And we were basically in the gym till like 6 o'clock in the morning just ecstatic with being able to get that opportunity that I've been working so hard for. Absolutely. I mean, God obviously has so many different paths to send people down. Like you said, I mean, it took a little while 
for it to get picking up. But once you were able to get into that situation, obviously you couldn't land really. I mean, Lakers are one of the most known organizations, not just in basketball, but obviously around the world. So that's the thing that is just a dream come true. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So what kind of was it like during the draft process, or the pre-draft workouts? Was it kind of like just one-on-one workouts with the other guys with you? Were there other current roster players? What was it kind of like for those atmospheres? Uh, so my pre-draft workout was very open, I would say is the word. I did so I did my pre-draft with TSF, the Skills Factory in Atlanta, and uh, that's where I'm from. So I was basically at home, being able to be with my family and work out every single day. And uh, with the Skills Factory, they mix it up. Sometimes it's one-on-one, sometimes it's skill work, sometimes it's, we have five-on-five, three-on-three. Uh, we had two-on-two workouts, uh, three-on-three workouts. And uh, it was just a lot of different combination, and they knew exactly what I needed to work on, exactly what I needed to do for my game when I had my individual workouts with um, coaches, and they had different coaches for everything. And um, I worked with about four different coaches rotation throughout the whole pre-draft summer, and uh, they just helped me improve my game, helped me with my confidence and continue to stay confident. And um, my agent, he, he really – my agent picked them out, and he knew what they could help me with, and they definitely – Help me with everything on the court and uh, talk to those guys. They're basically like family to me now. And uh, I know when I go back home, I got TSF to go back and do them any type of workouts with, and they're all cool. But um, the process was definitely fun. I met a lot of different people, um, worked out with Terrence Mann, uh, worked out with Justin James, um, Barry Brown, Jeremiah Martin, Josh Reeves were all working out there at TSF. So being able to make connections with them as well and us kind of basically bonding and become, becoming cool with each other was another experience that definitely glad I was able to be part of. No doubt. I think that's something that's so special about basketball because it's not actually so big where it's like football where there's so many roster spots. It's like where you just go from obviously playing at AAU, through high school, going to college, and then obviously the professional league. There's so many different guys all across the world that's so talented. And be able to make those connections that will last forever, honestly, because you'll be playing with them throughout the rest of your career and even past that. Definitely, for sure. Mm-hmm. And so what was it like right after the draft ended? What, did you get a lot of the calls, or what kind of was the process like getting ready to go prepare and end up signing with the Lakers for the summer league? Uh, so, like I said, the night of the draft, went straight to the gym, got in, had a great workout, and then I just continued to do what I've been doing. Uh, I worked out with TSF a couple more times. I think I had to leave about a week after the draft uh, to come to L.A. and basically just get ready for summer league and stuff like that. And we started early because we had the Sacramento Cup as well. So I was came up here early, but I was basically I was just with TSF the rest of the time, just like I had been doing. I didn't change anything, had my same regular rotation workouts, um, and just felt like I'm a professional now. And I, it just it just felt even better being out there working and just knowing like I'm gonna be with this team, and I'm got a impact. I got a chance to play in the NBA, and it starts now. It's been started, but it's like really starting now. And um, just continue to work, continue to see my uh, family. Um, did get a lot of calls, obviously. The next morning was crazy. Uh, it was so late because you know how the draft is. It doesn't matter until like 1, 2 o'clock here. Well, back in Georgia. And um, But, yeah, I got a lot of calls, a lot of um, congrats, a lot of family, a lot of friends. We're happy to see that uh, all the hard work I've been putting in is finally paying off. And um, just had a lot of good people around me. It was fun. No doubt. I think that moment, obviously – each stage you go up, obviously, when you first get to play college, is you get that realization that your college is paid for, like, you've accomplished that part. But, I mean, NBA, obviously, from a kid, is everyone's dream. And you know, just put on that jersey, even if it's summer league or whatnot at the time, that's a huge thing. And that's something that really only a very few select people ever get to do that and put on those jerseys. That's, that's right. When I saw the, when I first saw my name on that Lakers jersey, especially for media day, it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was it was a great moment for me. It was a blessing. Mm, no doubt. So talk a little bit more about the summer league. Obviously, like you said, you got, you got to go play in the Sacramento one, and then obviously you went to the Vegas one. But talk about what the difference was between those two leagues and what really kind of stood out to you and some of the teammates that you really created a good bond with. Well, the Sacramento Cup is a lot smaller, so it was only four teams, and you could really do a lot more scouting for sure with that. Um, so, you, yeah, it was just a little – everybody was in the same place. It was fun, though, being able to get those extra couple games in going into some league unlike most teams that just – come straight to some league and that's their first game and uh, it could be positive negative depending on how everything turns out but we definitely had a lot of chemistry going in um before that because we were with each other for at least a week before some league even started 
Um, and it was just, it was, it was cool. It was fun. We got to know each other, talk, um, get it to know each other's game, know what each person can do. And as games continue to go on, we got better. Um, Sacramento Cup, we went 2-1. and one. That last game against Sacramento, we were down by like almost 20, came back win. That was a great momentum for us, great win. Uh, some league, we struggled a little bit. It was a lot more teams, not as much scouting as done than it was in the Sac- Sacramento Cup. And just uh, faster, faster pace. You know, we were already three games in a week ahead of everybody. We were kind of feeling it. We played like, I think, nine games or eight games in about 12, 13 days. So it was a lot going on, a lot of tie, a lot of injuries, a lot of this and that. But uh, it was, like I said, it was a great experience. You know, I used to dream and watch the NBA Summer League and finally being there, playing in it, it was just a dream come true. Mm-hmm. I know Jordan Howard was on before and kind of talked about that, how you guys were able to kind of create that chemistry, but at the same time, the first few games were fine and all, but once you kind of got that three games, I think it was in four or five days because you went from Sacramento right to Vegas, it yep. did kind of, you could tell some of the stuff was getting a little tiring, but I mean, being able to, like you said, be able to go put on that Summer League jersey is something that I think now, like for these generations coming up, everyone watches Summer League. It's that laid back kind of fun thing where you get to see all the young players, and that's something that being able to do that experience is an amazing thing. Right, for sure. Summer League is it's a great experience. Anybody that gets to experience that is just great opportunity to have a lot of people watch that Mm -hmm. no doubt so obviously you did really great in the summer league and you're able to go secure a contract with the lakers and be able to go to training camp so talk about that and what it was like getting that call and be able to sign the first paperwork to be able to say you're a part of the lakers now oh it was it was great um i kind of downplayed the actual signing part then everybody (laughs) else did because i i kind of did all this excitement and happiness stuff right after the draft but uh, being able to get that call like they're going to call you. They're going to get you to sign the papers tomorrow or whatever. It was just like, okay, everything's finally being official. And it was when I went down there, well, before, I got, of course, after my agent called me, I called my mom and told her, like, this is going to happen. And, you know, I'm just finally signing my paper and stuff. But once everything kind of got out there, it was just more congratulations, more family, more friends. And um, But it was just, it's just great. Like, some league, I had fun. I just played my game. I didn't try to change or do stuff that I did do to get me to this point and that's something that a lot of my people a lot of my coaches told me like don't do what you haven't been doing like don't try and prove a point just if anything if you're gonna prove a point prove that you can do what you've been doing to the best of your ability and that's what I pride myself with and it, I just had fun I played my game I felt comfortable the coaches were cool my teammates were cool and we all just wanted to play basketball and um, just being able to had my dream come true and actually signed with paper my first NBA contract. It's just been it's just been great. I can't I can't mm-hmm. even explain. Absolutely. I think you talked kind of about that just not changing your game because I think a lot of people look at it, obviously you are a little undersized for playing the center spot or power forward and all that. But at the same time there's so many guys you still look at that they still play and not just play at an NBA level, but you see guys like Draymond and so many guys that are all stars that can play and Really, I don't think it de- – I mean, obviously, height can help, don't get me wrong, but as long as you're able to do the fundamentals and play your game, which you've obviously mastered, being one of the great rebounders in college basketball, I mean, obviously, it can translate to any level. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah, there's, there's smaller guys out there that's still in the league that's well-known, and I definitely feel like one day if I continue to work and continue to just stay the course, I could potentially hopefully be in that same position as them. Mm-hmm. And then talk about calling your mom after that. What was it like being able to tell her that you did finally accomplish your dream officially, and what was her reaction? Uh, she was happy. <laughs> she was actually in Vegas when it all happened, so she was she she was smiling. She started crying. She's just she just knew everything because my mom she knows everything that I've been through, everything that I've tried, everything I've worked to do to get to this point, and like her finally seeing it pay off, she felt it the most out of everybody, and um, she. She she's she's just really been there. She's seen it, and she she's happy for me. She was she couldn't. She was just very grateful, happy, and mm-hmm. so was I. It was a great experience, and she she's just there for me. She's happy for everything that went down. Absolutely, I think whenever you have a family member, especially I think a mom, whenever you to have that person that through the downs and hot lows and all that is always there for you. I mean, when you're able to do something that really has been like you said a dream that you've always had. I think just they always care so much and they invest so much in us to so be able to let them know that. I mean, it's just amazing to see the, obviously their reaction. I mean, you see the stories all the time, which is awesome to see. Yeah, it's 
for sure. Mm -hmm. And so then obviously Lakers have added a bunch of key additions, obviously getting Anthony Davis and guys like that. And to be able to be a part of one of the most talked organizations and one of the biggest organizations in all the world. Talk about what that was like, obviously going to media day, meeting some of the players and just like you said, seeing that official jersey for the first time. Uh, yeah, so it was definitely a progression um, from meeting the players to training camp and all of that stuff, media day. And it was just all a, a continuous growth and progression. And when I first met LeBron, it was crazy. First met AD, crazy. And continued Rondo, Dudley, Quinn, everybody. It was just, it just got crazy. But then after a while, I'm just like, okay, they're people too. They got mm -hmm. families. They got lives. They're just really good at playing basketball for sure. But – these guys right here, they they got lives. They they go through problems as well. So it was, I've learned a lot from them so far. I've talked to Quinn. I've talked to AC. They've given me basically their knowledge and the things that they've been through, and they've already helped me. So with a lot of the coaches as well, they've given me a lot of advice on what to expect and just continue no matter what happens, just being me and continue. Don't let anything that could possibly happen in the future dictate what I feel about myself. And that's just real facts. And I'm glad that I was able to get that so early from people that's been through this process and been through these situations before and just giving me as much as I can, even before the fact. But uh, it's it's been it's been a great experience going from training camp, playing with these guys, competing with these guys, trying to make a name for myself in this league, uh, to media day. Media day was a lot bigger than Wilmington. Uh, we got a, we got like five cameras around, and we go all the way around. That's about it. But media day is pictures, interviews, there's more pictures, more interviews, the whole gym filled up, there's media, TV, it's, it makes you think it's like, wow, like, this, this is a whole different level. Mm -hmm. And like I said, once I saw that Lakers jersey with my name on it, I really, I looked at it and just thought about all, everything I've been through and just the work and the process and the people that helped me get here and just finally seeing it. It's just, it just, it, 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 it almost made me get a little bit emotional just to finally see that. But uh, it was, it was a great feeling to have, a great experience to see. And um, it's just, once I see that name on that jersey, I just think about everything that it took to get here. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's something like just reflecting moment. I think no matter where you are, if you're someone that obviously is like Zion or RJ, top of the draft or guys that are in draft, anyone that gets to get and see that jersey for the first time, I think you just look back because it's just a moment of, You've done it, really. I mean, obviously, there's still work to be done, but that time you've accomplished the next goal, and once again, that's just a huge thing to be able to accomplish. Yeah, for sure. Big thing. Mm hmm So, I'm heading into training camp. What were some of the guys that, that you talked a little about them, but what were some of the guys that really helped guide you or talked to you, and what were some of the things that you kind of learned from some of the guys on the team? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like I said, uh, Quinn and AC, I've talked to them the most just from their experience from the G League and coming up to the – NBA to being where they're at now, one of the greatest, basically the greatest team in the world right now. And uh, they basically, a lot of a lot of the input, like I said, was just um, stay in the course, continue to grind, don't let whatever happens in the future dictate how I am towards myself, and basically, like, stay ready. Like, no matter what happens in adversity, just always staying ready. Like, somebody could get hurt, you get caught up, you got to be ready to know play, you got to be ready to play your best and like in a situation like that if you're ready and they see that and you perform that looks even better like mm -hmm. they just always want to make sure i was prepared make sure i was ready know what to expect and i uh, just stay available stay healthy take care of your body and always be ready to compete because when you're on that court you're playing for that job you want to show like you can play with these people you want to show that you can compete that you can make a difference on this team or any other team that may give you that chance and whenever it gets to that point, you want to just stay ready and don't let anything else change your thought process on what it can, what I can be in this league. Absolutely. I think there's so many guys that really have kind of taken over that energy role that have kind of developed from the G League. I think you look at guys like, obviously, Montrose Harrell is one of the big guys that people really look at, saying he kind of was not really looked at highly in Houston. And Kevin Farid, a lot of these guys now, that you can come in, just, that energy plug has become so vital to so many NBA rosters that, not just like for any, just like for any team, especially these contenders, like that's something that you keep developing. It's easily a spot that is needed on every roster. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the big news recently has been 
the China trip and all that's going on. But talk about that from uh, obviously you experienced firsthand, but talk about what it was like and kind of how you guys were dealing with it and what kind of were the side effects that came with that. Uh, well, the China trip was a whole another situation that I did not expect to happen at all. And um, it happened so fast. Literally, as soon as we touched down, I started hearing about it. And it's it was a crazy experience. Didn't we, we weren't able to go places like we were supposed to. Everything got canceled. We didn't know if we were leaving early. We didn't know if we were coming back to the States. We didn't know. Just a lot of uncertainty. Um, everything literally got canceled. We weren't able to do the benefits things for the kids we weren't able to go to our events we didn't even get to get the team pictures like we literally got there everything started happening uh played the games we weren't even sure if we were going to play the games we honestly thought they might get canceled at the last minute just because but we, we, we were happy that we were able to play we were, um got to see the fans uh put on a show for them and uh we were just happy to come back safely mm-hmm, no doubt I, mean, I think that's something that obviously is a kind of shell shocking thing because you guys go out with a lot of expectations as to what you were going to do. Obviously, it was a lot of stuff to help the community out and be there for the kids, and that's really the end goal kind of thing. But obviously, when things get shifted, and end of the day, though, it still is being able to go play basketball, and that was something you guys were able to do. And you also had some good moments there as well. But talk about some of the games and what really stood out to you playing against Brooklyn, playing with your teammates, and just talk about that experience. Oh, uh, well, before we played Brooklyn, I did not realize that. They got shooters like that. That's one thing. Um, I know the first game they hit 23s, and they only they missed 19. They took what, 41, and uh, it was I was like, wow, they can shoot. Uh, so that's one thing I realized for sure about Brooklyn. They got a lot of good perimeter players, um, shooters. They got a couple guys that can finish, and uh, but they got a they got a solid team. I uh, think me playing it. Playing a team that I haven't played at all, whether it be summer league or obviously preseason, it was a different view on other teams, and other teams are different in other things as well. Some may be better with getting to the rim. There's other teams that are similar to them, and uh, it was just something good to see that something different than what I've been seeing this whole NBA experience that I've had so far. But um, definitely got to play more, getting to know even better with my teammates playing together. And uh, they see my game, I see theirs, and I try to help each other out, talk to each other, communicate with each other, and just try to make the best team as we can as coming together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so was there, when you're playing games against Brooklyn out there, was there someone that maybe you talked to or kind of maybe gave you a help or kind of you enjoyed playing against? Playing against DeAndre uh, Jordan was pretty fun. Um, he's a bigger guy than me, which most of them are, but he tries to, you know, play a little bully ball, and I like that because, like me, I'm a somebody comes to me with a challenge, I'm gonna accept it regardless, and um, I definitely held my ground and um, just had a presence. Like he, he, even if it may not have been a big or small impact, I felt like I made a presence, and uh, it was just some. It was fun. It was fun going back and forth for him for a little bit. Mm -hmm, absolutely and I think definitely because you guys did play two games out there I mean being able to kind of get both times in a row kind of playing the same team is something that the first game obviously kind of get a feeling ball so then you get to go back and play again and that also had to be a good thing too true mm -hmm. and so then obviously just going back a little bit more of the situation so when you guys were out there so when you guys since a lot of things got canceled what were some of the things you guys were able to do and kind of bonded the team still while you guys were out there uh well we had dinners and stuff together um we weren't able to leave the hotel as much as we were supposed to be able to, but uh, some of us got to go to the Shanghai Tower, and uh, that was that was pretty dope. That's the second tallest building in the world, and we got to see that it was crazy high. We elevated one of the fastest elevators in the world, and it was fun doing that and just um, going together as a team, and it was it was fun. Obviously, though, I think something like that where you guys kind of are in a way trapped into playing with just being with each other a lot more kind of allows you guys to have a chemistry and bond that will kind of last for a very long time because kind of, anytime you have adversity and you're able to go with it with kind of family is an awesome thing, too. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So then once you guys were able to come back to the States, what were some of the things? Obviously, there's been a lot of media attention still regarding that. What's it been like having the media a lot regarding just to that situation and being as a team and how do you guys kind of handle that? Oh, it's been it's definitely been interesting to see how it is playing out still. 
Because after we got back, I low-key forgot all about the whole China trip. I'm like, I'm here, I'm back in the States, that's all I meant. But, like, even well, yesterday in the locker room, we saw in the media, they're still talking about the whole China trip and uh, what happened. Uh, are we still going to be cool with China? And it was it was just crazy to still see that people still talking about it. But I guess it had only been a couple of days, and they need something to talk about. But it was just interesting to see if they still talk about it. But we... We haven't talked about it since we got back. Mm-hmm. So since you guys have got back, you guys have played a couple more games and all. But talk about that. And obviously, you had one of your best games so far. I mean, so far, you're already 10-5. and five, But you had one of your best games. And so talk about that and really what it was like and kind of clicking and playing at the next level at that level. Uh, it was fun. I knew going in, like, I was going to get a little bit more playing time as well like with AD and LeBron. And a lot of the guys just kind of resting for injuries. So I was always I was already ready to play. And uh, like, whenever I get the opportunity, whether it be three minutes, three seconds, 30 minutes, 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give it everything that I have and try to make the biggest impact that I can with those minutes that I do get. And um, coach talked to us and he let me know and uh, he communicated everything with us. And uh, just having that mental ready, it was just fun to go out there, have fun. I had my mom's here as well. She's at the Staples for the first time. And that was my first time being at Staples and it's a different it's a different vibe out there and mm-hmm. it was fun to be out there and just perform well and i continue to try and do that as much as i can while i'm here absolutely and so for the next few games is there something that you really want to prove or something you really want to try doing in the last couple of games uh just the same thing i've been doing playing hard uh playing physical having a presence rebounding uh, help my teammates and just make my team better in any way that I possibly can to help us win a game and continue to win. But uh, nothing else I really want to prove. I just want to make sure everybody knows those key things about me. And no matter where I'm at, that's what I bring to the table. Absolutely. And then just talking about the upcoming season, obviously, which kind of expectations? I mean, as of right now, it's going to probably be the G League, but there's obviously always a lot of two-way spots open. And something, like I said, that brings the energy rebound is a very vital thing. So, What's something you're kind of expecting to be able to play in the G League, but also trying to get to the next level and getting an official roster spot? So what's that kind of thing your goals are for this upcoming season? Uh, goals is, for sure, just staying in the process. Like, uh, a lot of the knowledge I got from Quinn and AC is just uh, continue to grind, continue to bust in my behind to basically get to where I know I should be at. And uh, it's a process, and you can't skip can't skip the route. You got to take the course. If you try to skip, things end up going set back more than it is set forward. And so whatever ends up happening in these next couple of days or the, the whole season, I'm just going to continue to work and continue to grind as much as I have been. And then whenever um, an opportunity comes, I just want to make sure that I'm ready and I perform and do what I have to do and just prove that point that I, I belong here in this league. Absolutely. And then I would like to wrap up with the last couple of questions. And then the first one is just, Who would you say has been your biggest role model in your life? Uh, Biggest role model is my mother, without a doubt. Uh, Me and her have been through so much. She's, I'm in a single mother home. She's raised me since I was little. She saw me everything that I know to this point. And uh, she, like I said, she's always with me. Um, College, she came to all my games as much as she could. She would drive from Baltimore to Wilmington if she had to. And um, she just, she's, she's always there for me, my ups and my downs. My sides, when I'm going sideways, like I'm when I'm all over the place, she's there to just calm me down and just help me get through whatever I may be getting through. And um, she she's my biggest role model. That's awesome. I think whenever you're able to have that, a sibling, a mom, a dad, whatever it is, or best friend that is able to kind of be that motivator for you, that gets you along the way, that still holds you accountable, but still pushes you and loves on you, is just a great thing that not many people, not really, there's only really one person ever that can fill that role, and it's awesome to have. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I would like to wrap up just talking about since I love, I'm a man of faith and all, and just talk about how God's help gets you to the point you're at today. Uh, without him, I wouldn't be here at all. And uh, that's that just comes from my mother as well. Like she's put me um, to believe in God and know like without God, I'm nothing. And that's something I plan, of course, to teach my children and. He, God has just done so much for me, and he, he continues to bless me with opportunities and giving me chances to get to where I am now. And I, I definitely believe me having my faith in him and everything that's happened in my process, the good, the bad, it's all been a part of what he has for me in this future. And he hasn't done yet. 
So I just continue to have my faith in him. No matter what may happen in the future, I know it's just part of the bigger picture that he has for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think God obviously is always a person that you can rely on to. That's just right there. And obviously he gets you through the lows and the highs. And obviously as long as you're on his path and he keeps guiding you down that path, it's something that's always special for each and every single person. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Well, I appreciate you coming on today, my guy. Best of luck in the last few preseason games and this upcoming season, obviously, the rest of your career. No problem. Thank you, man. Have a good one. Uh, no problem. God bless. You too.